Good morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Goble back at it again. Reading the Bible through in 22, just for you. Sorry, not many noble in the house on the scene on the set. Uh, March 15th, day 74 of our journey together. We're reading the Bible through in chronological order. Using the World English Bible Translation. It is in the public domain. That's why we use it. Can't get in trouble. Can't get in trouble with any publishers for it. And this is all right. Started with Genesis, moved into Job, then went Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and we're in Deuteronomy 10 today. We're in Deuteronomy 10, 11, and 12, I do believe. I think we go all the way to the end of Deuteronomy 12. Deuteronomy 12, we do. We do Deuteronomy 10, 11, and 12 today. And then, who are we praying for? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, yes, I do. Jim and Juliana Glesser in South Africa. That's who we're play, play, playing. That's who we're playing for. We are playing for Jim and Juliana Glesser. And I guess we're going to pray as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into Deuteronomy 10 here. Deuteronomy 10. At that time, Yahweh said to me, Remember, this is Moses. He is recounting back to the children of Israel their experiences since leaving Egypt. So this is the group that's going to inherit the promised land. They're actually going to cross over. So all the those who were disciplined, those who were supposed to walk around 40 years in the wilderness, they've passed away. They've died. So their forefathers are dead. Now it's their offspring, their kids. At that time, Yahweh said to me, cut two stone tablets like the first and come up to me onto the mountain and make an ark of wood. I will write on the tablets of, I will write on the tablets, the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke and you shall put them in an ark in the ark, man, here we go. So I made an ark of acacia wood and cut two stone tablets like the first and went up onto the mountain, having the two tablets in my hand. He wrote on the tablets, according to the first writing, the 10 commandments, which Yahweh spoke to you on the mountain out of the middle of the fire in the day of the assembly. And Yahweh gave them to me. I turned and came down from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark, which I had made. And there they are as Yahweh commanded me. The children of Israel traveled from Beroth Bene Jakan to Maserah. There Aaron died, and there he was buried. And Eliezer, his son, ministered in the priest's office in his place. From there they traveled to Gudgoda, Gudgoda, and then from Gudgoda to Jutbatath, Jutbatha, <laughs> a land of brooks of water. At that time Yahweh set apart the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of Yahweh's covenant, to stand before Yahweh to minister to him and to bless in his name to this day. Therefore, 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 Levi has no portion or inheritance with his brothers. Yahweh is his inheritance, according to Yahweh your God, according as Yahweh your God spoke to him. I think my brain is picking up words further up in the sentence and trying to put it in. It's just going too fast. Slow down, bro. Slow down. Breathe. Here we go. Deuteronomy 10, verse 10. I stayed on the mountain as at the first time, 40 days and 40 nights, and Yahweh listened to me that time also. Yahweh would not destroy you. Yahweh said to me, Arise, take your journey before the people, and they shall go in and possess the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Now Israel, what does Yahweh your God require of you but to fear Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, and to serve Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul, to keep Yahweh's commandments and statutes which I command you today for your good? It is interesting to note, it really is for your good. His laws are not burdensome. They're better. They're better than chasing after the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They really are. Verse 14, behold, to Yahweh your God belongs heaven, the heaven of heavens, and the earth, with all that is therein. Only Yahweh had a delight in your fathers to love them, and he chose their offspring after them, even you above all peoples, as it is today. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart 
and be no more stiff-necked. For Yahweh your God, he is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, the mighty and the awesome, who doesn't respect persons or take bribes. He executes justice for the fatherless and widow and loves the foreigner in giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the foreigner, for you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear Yahweh your God. You shall serve him. You shall cling to him, and you shall swear by his name. He is your praise, and he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down into Egypt with seventy persons, and now Yahweh your God has made you as the stars of the sky for multitude. That's pretty, pretty, um pretty powerful stuff here like the circumcise the foreskin of your heart he's talking about like it was always supposed to be something you know circumcision was pointing to something more it was, it was never just the um physical sign it was never just the physical purely physical the covenant you know and um blessings from this community would go to the entire earth. And that's what it was supposed to do. Deuteronomy 11. Therefore you shall love Yahweh your God and keep his instructions, his statutes, his ordinances, and his commandments always. Know this day, for I don't speak with your children who have not known and who have not seen the chastisement of Yahweh your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, his outstretched arm, his signs, and his works, which he did in the midst, middle of Egypt to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and to all his land. And what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and their chariots, and how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued you, and how Yahweh was de has destroyed them to this day, and what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eli Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and every living thing that followed them in the middle of all Israel. But your eyes have seen all of Yahweh's great work, which he did. Therefore, you shall keep the entire commandment, which I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land that you go over to possess, and that you may prolong your days in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers to give to them and to their offspring, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land where you go in to possess isn't isn't like the land of Egypt that you came out of, where you sowed your seed and watered it with your foot as a garden of herbs. But the land that you go over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water from the rain of the sky, a land which Yahweh your God cares for. Yahweh your God's eyes are always on it from the beginning of the year, even to the end of the year. It shall happen if you shall listen diligently to my commandments, which I command you today to love Yahweh your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give the rain for your land and its season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your grain, your new wine and your oil. I will give grass in your fields for your livestock and you shall eat and be full. Be careful, lest your heart be deceived and you turn away to serve other gods and worship them. And Yahweh's anger be kindled against you and he shut up the sky so that there is no rain and the land doesn't yield its fruit and you perish quickly from off the good land which Yahweh gives you. Spoiler alert, they don't. <laughs> they, they don't serve him with all their heart and with all their soul and they do go after false gods. Verse 18, therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. You shall bind them for a sign on your hand and they shall be as front, for frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates that your days and your children's days may be multiplied in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers to give them as the days of the heavens above the earth. For if you shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways and to cling to him, then Yahweh will drive out all these nations from before you and you shall dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourselves. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea, shall be your border. No man will be able to withstand you. Yahweh, your God, will lay the fear of you and the dread of you on all the land that you tread on, as he has spoken to you. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you listen to the commandments of Yahweh, your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not listen to the commandments of Yahweh, your God, but turn away out of the way, which I command you today, to go after other gods which you have not known. 
It shall happen when Yahweh your God brings you into the land that you go to possess, that you shall see the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Aren't they beyond the Jordan, behind the way of the going down of the sun in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the Arabah near Gilgal, beside the oaks of Moreh? For you are to pass over the Jordan to go in to possess the land which Yahweh your God gives you, and you shall possess it and dwell in it. You shall observe to do all the statutes and the ordinances which I set before you today. Deuteronomy chapter 12. These are the statutes and the ordinances which you shall observe to do in the land which Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess all the days that you live on the earth. You shall surely destroy all the places in which the nations that you shall dispossess serve their gods. On the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree, you shall break down their altars, dash their pillars in pieces, and burn their Asherah poles with fire. You shall cut down the engraved images of their gods. You shall destroy their name out of that place. You shall not do so to Yahweh your God. But to the place which Yahweh your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, you shall seek his habitation and you shall come there. You shall bring your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the wave offering of your hand, your vows, your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herd and of your flock there. There you shall eat before Yahweh your God and shall rejoice in all that you put your hand to, you and your households, in which Yahweh your God has blessed you. You shall not do all the things that we do here today, every man whatever is right in his own eyes, for you haven't yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which Yahweh your God gives you. But when you do, or when you go over the Jordan and dwell in the land which Yahweh your God causes you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies around you so that you dwell in safety, then it shall happen that to the place which Yahweh your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there, there you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the wave offerings of your hand, and all your choice, all your choice vows which you vow to Yahweh. You shall rejoice before Yahweh your God, you and your sons, your daughters, your male servants, your female servants, and the Levites, who and the Levite who is within your gates, because he has no portion nor inheritance with you. Be careful that you don't offer your burnt offerings in every place that you see, but in the place which Yahweh chooses in one of your tribes. There you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I command. Yet you may kill and eat meat within all your gates, after all the desire of your soul, according to Yahweh your God's blessing, which he has given you. The unclean and the clean may eat of it as the, of the gazelle and the deer. Only you shall not eat the blood. You shall pour it out on the earth like water. You may not eat within your gates the tithe of your grain, or of your new wine, or of your oil, or the firstborn of your herd of your flock or of your flock, sorry, <clears throat> nor any of your vows which you vow, nor your free will offerings, nor the wave offering of your hand, but you shall eat them before Yahweh your God in the place which Yahweh your God shall choose, you, your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, and the Levite who is within your gates. You shall rejoice before Yahweh your God in all that you put your hand to. Be careful that you don't forsake the Levite as long as you live in your land. When Yahweh your God enlarges your border as he has promised you, and you say, I want to eat meat, because your soul desires to eat meat, you may eat meat after all the desire of your soul. If the place which Yahweh your God shall choose to put his name is too far from you, then you shall kill of your herd and of your flock, which Yahweh has given you as I have commanded you. And you may eat within your gates after all the desire of your soul. Even as the gazelle and as the deer is eaten, so you shall eat of it. The unclean and the clean may eat of it alike. Only be sure that you don't eat the blood, for the blood is the life. You shall not eat the life with the meat. You shall not eat it. You shall pour it out on the earth like water. You shall not eat it, that it may go well with you and with your children after you. When you do that which is right in Yahweh's eyes, only your holy things which you have and your vows, you shall take and go to the place which Yahweh shall choose. You shall offer your burnt offerings, the meat and the blood, on Yahweh, your God's altar. The blood of your sacrifices shall be poured out on Yahweh, your God's altar, and you shall eat the meat. Observe and hear all these words which I command you, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, when you do that which is good and right in Yahweh your God's eyes. When Yahweh your God cuts off the nations from before you, where you go in to dispossess them, and you dispossess them and dwell in their land, be careful that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you not inquire after their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? I will do likewise. You shall not do so to Yahweh your God, for every abomination to Yahweh which he hates, they have done to their gods. For they even burn their sons and their daughters in the fire to their gods. Whatever thing I command you, that you shall observe to do. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. 
That is it. We're right at 15 minutes here. We're going to wrap up. We're going to pray, and then we're going to be done. Remember, if you're praying, if you're driving, keep your eyes open, eyes on the road, pay attention. And if you're not, that's totally fine. So Jim and Juliana uh, Geiser, Geiser, sorry, not Glesser. What was that's an, that's an I, not an L. Jim and Juliana, well, it's G-I-E. I would say Giesel, but that might be the German in me, not Geiser, which is what you would probably say. So anyways, Jim and Juliana and their family serve the Student Y Campus Ministry at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. The Student Y seeks to reach students for Christ and to nurture their growth into whole life and lifelong disciples of Jesus, doing so within the context of a post-apartheid society, still marred by continuing, continuing, continuing racial injustice and deep social and economic divides. Student Y. So they love getting to know high school and college students living cross-culturally and learning about other cultures, plus being outdoors, reading, cooking, Greek food, and exploring whatever their three boys are interested in. So they, they have been married and they got married in 2001. They've lived and worked in six states and two countries. No, they spent some time in Germany. How about that? And South Africa. So the Antioch. Partners is the group, the Antioch Partners. All right, so let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. I pray for um, us that we would that we would learn from your word, that we would not grow weary in well doing, that we would not get exhausted reading your word through. As we repeat some of the things that we've already heard, I pray that we would be would be impressed upon our hearts and our minds and our souls, and that we would be filled with your word, and that we would not. Uh, get tired and bored and exhausted with it, and that you would use it to change us, to draw us unto yourself, to make us more like Christ, that we would not be like the man who looks at himself in the mirror and walks away and forgets what he looks like, but that we would look into your word, that we would drink deeply, and that we would remember it, and that we would apply it, and that we would live it, that we would not forget you and seek after false gods, that we would not forget you, seek after our own way, that we would not forget you, but that we would um, pour out ourselves as drink offerings, living sacrifices before you, and that you would receive us. Draw us unto yourself, conform us to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And we also lift up Jim and Juliana to you and their family. Pray that you would please bless their labors in South Africa, that you would grant them great success in their desire to uh, reach across cultures, and that um, they would that there would um, be peace in their midst, Father, and that also their example would be uh, seen by, by, by many who still have these um, deep um, social, economic, racial divisions, and that these divisions would disappear in Christ. These unrighteous preferences and unholy preferences one for another, that uh, all skin tone would disappear and all uh, rich and poor financial uh, barriers would disappear in the body of Christ there and that they would be one and that they would live for one another, that they would truly uh, be able to say that they, that Christians are known for their love there in the work of, of, of in Cape Town, South Africa, and that the gospel would be adorned with holiness of the of the the church members and, and the body of Christ there. Lord, play. Um, I pray for their marriage that they would set forth an example of Christ and His church, and that others would see what they have, and that they would want to be like that. That they would want that type of sweet relationship, a unique and 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 tight woven partnership. Um, in love and respect one for another. And Lord, that, that that would be, that they would not abandon each other. You would knit their hearts closer together as they work more and suffer more and experience more challenges, that they would grow closer together. And also pray for their kids, that you would draw them unto yourself in a saving way for their salvation, Lord, and that you would bless them with safety and success while they're working there. Um, also pray, Lord, for our world, that you would send forth 
peace and healing in our world, send forth the gospel. We need, we need the gospel to go forth. We need sinners to be changed. That's what we need. We need sinners to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our great need. And that's us too. We need to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Give grace to do so. Send forth your word in a powerful way. And uh, please accomplish all your will. We pray these in Christ's name. Amen. All right, y'all. I appreciate you. Appreciate you listening. And um, prayer requests. We've got um, notmanynoble at gmail.com. Hit me up. Facebook, Instagram. And uh, that's it. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.